What's up, Revenue and Raving Fans group, community, alliance, members? I, I don't know what we're calling ourselves yet, but uh, I'm, I'm just excited that you're here. And I'm excited to be sharing this video on brand building. So when we communicate with our customers through email, SMS, Messenger, any, any push channel in a D2C form, how do we build a brand? And what does that look like? And how do we establish that ooey gooey intangible connection that customers have with our, our company? What in, and how, do we, how does that work? And what is it? And is it even worth the time to do it? The short answer to, to that question is yes, it's worth the time. Uh, the long answer is going to be broken down here. But I want you to think about that connection that the customer has with you and your company. And don't forget that this connection is actually worth dollars and cents. So a lot of people forget that building a brand actually backs out in the long run. It'll actually differentiate you from the competition, which is a good thing. It'll also get your customers to spend more money with you another good thing. And you'll be the go-to source for new customers who come in, which is a good thing. And then when you go to sell your business, there will actually be a line item that says brand goodwill. And you'll be able to get a multiple based on the brand goodwill that's baked into your business. So there's actually a lot of dollars and cents values for, for building out a brand and making the customer experience that much more pleasurable. Even though it takes more work and it might not drive a two-day dollar and cents sale, it'll actually come out in the back end, which is what you want to do. Um, yeah, you need, to, you need to work on building out the brand and, and making sales today, or excuse me, you need to focus on making sales today, but building out the brand will actually give you longevity. So how do we establish that ooey gooey, intangible, like ethers feeling of brand? And brands way more than just a logo and a tagline, way, way more than that. It's actually how a customer feels when doing business with you. And how you can communicate to that customer and get them to say, that's me. They're talking to me. I am their ideal person. I'm raising my hand. I want more where they come back and they just keep coming back because you're, you've just gotten to so much alignment and sync with them that they can't go anywhere else. So what I want you to remember is here is asking yourself the question in your messaging that you're promoting out, uh, what has more value? Is it for the customer? What has more value for the customer, right? Is it having a toast to 200 people at some networking event where you ding, 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 hey, just everyone, I'm here and uh, this is my business and this is my service and if you need X, Y, and Z, I'm here for you, boop, 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 thanks, see you later. Or is it sitting down one-on-one -on -one at a coffee shop with a potential client, sipping coffee, hey, how's your day going? Hectic morning, how's your family? How's this, how's that? Understanding more about them. Tell me more about this problem that you have. Oh, that's interesting. This is what, that's what I kind of do over here, where I know somebody that does that. Or do, 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 it, there's it, what's going to have a deeper lasting relationship and connection and provide more value to the customer. So it's obviously going to be the sitting down, having a cup of coffee one-on-one. -on -one. So how do we communicate one-on-one -on -one with that customer? Well, first we need to figure out who our customer is and we want our customers to constantly say, yep, that's me. Every time we share a customer story, maybe not every time because you're going to have multiple demos of customers, but you want to be throwing out testimonials and social proof and getting uh, and using your languaging so that every once in a while a testimonial will come in or a social proof or some user generated content comes in that a customer goes, oh, that that's kind of like me. And once you start diving into the different demos that your customers are and who they are, you could start outlining 
how old they are, the type of income they have, family setting, social setting, um, uh, personal preferences, hobbies, and get really, really deep into who that person is and who those people are or the types of buckets of people so you can start crafting messages that get people to raise their hand to say, they're talking to me. Now, I want to show you a picture of somebody uh, who is 52 years old. And he's a male, a white male. And a lot of people would say, hey, who, what's your target demographic? Well, our target market is, you know, anyone from 45 to 55, uh, you know, medium household income, um, you know, lives in suburbia, right? That's a sort of a generic answer. And if you're trying to build a brand and you're trying to use that as the foundation that you're building your brand on top of, you're going to have a hard, hard time because let me show you how going surface level like that will make your life more difficult when building a brand. So this person was born in 1969. We're going to have a, a certain communication style that we're going to have with this person, right? Matthew McConaughey. We're going to have a, a communication style that's a little bit different based on what it is that we're selling, what our services are, what our products are, if this is our target market. Now, let's say we have the same products, the same services, uh, we, we have the same offering, but our ideal client is actually this man, Jason Bateman. Still 69 years old, or born in 1969, a little bit different. Not much of a, of a tweak in the languaging and the, the demographic. Maybe it's, it's still the same, right? But you could auto automatically tell, okay, Jason Bateman, I'm, I'm going to be talking to him a little bit differently than I'm talking to Matthew McConaughey. Who this person is, I want you to get to asking yourself the question, who is this person? Really get deep down. How am I going to communicate with them? Why am I communicating with them this way? Okay, who else is born in 1969? This guy, Jack Black. You're going to speak way different to Jack Black than you're speaking to Jason Bateman and Matthew McConaughey, right? Your communication style is going to be different. So understanding who your ideal target market is and then communicate to them. And I want you to know the difference between who your ideal target market is and who your buyers are. Because sometimes you'll be putting out ads and getting customers and this and that. And you think your target market's, you know, Jack Black, or excuse me, let's, say, let's call it Matthew McConaughey. You think your target market's Matthew McConaughey, but really your buyers are Jack Black. What's going on here? There's a disconnect. And now future communication isn't being built correctly. The brand ethos and essence is kind of crumbling and not getting its footing. Well, that's because your buyers and for some reason your marketing is attracting Jack Black rather than your ideal client who's Matthew McConaughey. And that's what branding um, will help you do is attract your ideal client uh, – ideal target client for your business. And now there's ways to do this to get people to raise their hands and feel like you're speaking directly to them as a customer. And that's through languaging and automation. No more hey friend. We live in a world now, and that's like in an email, like you didn't capture the person's first name. So now you're saying, hey friend, or there's like a subject line where you're supposed to pl plug in the person's first name, but the autofill, if you don't have the first name, is friend. Like that's just sloppy into 2021. I want to feel like you you know who I am, that you're speaking directly to me. That if you look up my CRM and you could see all the different times I've opened your emails and what I clicked and what I purchased, I better have a name in there and not be communicated to as, hey, friend. And we live in a world where this is super easy. We can do this no problem. We can track and, and push based on user behavior, who they are, the demographic, how they came in, what actions they've taken on the website, and make it a more personalized experience. 
Now, making this a more personalized experience, we can get into the numerous, numerous ways of tactics and strategies on, on how to do that. Uh, and I will in future videos, but this is just a broad level strokes of brand building. Another thing that you want to do here on this, this second bullet point here is position yourself as the go-to problem solver in your niche, in your industry. And with the communication that you're sharing with your customers, is, is, has to, it has to drive value. It can't just be a one-time promotion or more, every time the customer gets an email, it's more selling your product, selling your product, selling your product. It, that you're gonna not build a, a solid brand doing that. There's some companies that can do it, but if I would say uh, a competitor comes along, um, that they're probably going to be toast because it's not very hard. So like a company that comes to mind, like I love this company, Viore Clothing. They make really great t-shirts. But if another company came along and produced the same quality t-shirt, eh, I would have no buy-in. Uh, that's because they didn't build out the value enough. They just keep sending me emails on, you know, buy more of our product. So how do we provide more value and get customers bought in on our story, get customers bought in on the brand? And that is telling the brand story a little bit, telling them, you know, humble beginnings. We started here. We did this. We did that. We we solved our own problem. And then we decided to solve a couple other people's problems. And then we next thing you know, now we're this big company or a medium sized company or a small company. And now we're doing more. And infusing that brand story and the company story into your communication is going to get people bought in to why they should be sticking around with, for you, with you. The second thing that you want to share are the problems that you see in your industry that you're solving. So the problems that, that you see in your industry, now you don't have to solve all of them, but if you could share like, oh, hey, there's this problem going on or there's this problem, let me give you an example. Um, uh, so it, my, one of my old companies was in uh, the productivity space and we shared how people would get burnt out by the end of the day, uh, how they would... Um, feel like uh, by the end of the week, they took, you know, two steps forward, but 10 steps back. We'd share uh, information on, you know, why people are getting overwhelmed, um, how to, why stress was so high in the workplace, why people weren't so hitting their goals and why New Year's resolutions didn't work. These were all problems that we spoke about. And because we spoke about these problems, we instantly became the problem solver, even though we didn't solve a problem yet. We just knew the problems well enough and deep enough that we became the go-to source for customers to be like, you know what, if they're, they're answering or these solving these, these problems because they know the problem so well. And we knew the problems for the entire like productivity, performance, positivity ecosystem, right? Now, the third thing that you're going to share is solutions solutions to these problems, i.e. your offering, your product and your service. When you keep talking about the problem, every once in a while, hey, uh, it, do you have this problem? Here's some free ways to solve it, whether it's a download or a quick video series or something along those lines. And if you really have a problem, you can buy this product or the service from us that solves this problem for you because we've already figured out the solution. You know, So that's how you share and, and infuse branding into your communication and position you as a problem solver and a leader in your industry and in your niche that will weed out the, the competition. So where can you infuse these brand building strategies? Hyper-targeting your, your, your email list or your, your, your customer list. Where can you uh, speak directly to the problems? Where can you speak to directly to the solutions? Where can you infuse that brand story and thread that through? The first place is a welcome series. So someone opts in to your website or SMS. 
infuse that brand story, infuse the problems, provide value, give, give information, give a new perspective. And you can also say, hey, if you do have this problem, here's a solution for you. But don't let it be solution, 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 solution. Buy now, buy now, buy now. Oh, here's another 20% off. Uh, if you buy today, here's another 20% off. Hey, you know, it's it's a random Wednesday. Here's another 20% off. That's not, you're not going to build a, a lasting brand there. In the post-purchase sequence, this is where I see a lot of companies not doing diddly squat. Literally, most marketers will take you, tell you, oh, customer acquisition, drive more sales, uh, increase ROAS, return on ad spend, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now you just acquired a customer. You did all of this work to make the sale. That's when the actual relationship begins. You didn't have a relationship before a sale was made. You had some communication back and forth. You understood the that maybe the customer started to to feel you a little bit more and feel that that you were the right choice in making their decision, but you actually didn't start the relationship until the transaction was made. Now, it could have been a small relationship in exchange for a name and an email address and a SMS number. That's a small exchange. But the real relationship comes about when you provide value in exchange for money, whether that's product or service. Continue the dialogue. Continue that relationship. Continue cultivating it. That is going to build out a brand, and then you're going to get people to, to be raving fans and advocates for you. They're going to be up. Dude, I bought this thingy. It showed up, and guess what? The, I thought the communication was good before I bought. The communication is even better after I bought. They're showing me videos on how to get the most out of this. They're putting me into a, a back-end VIP Facebook group. They're, they're communicating with me on like how I can get the most out of this product um, for, for free. And that exceeds the expectations and increases the customer experience. Another th way that you can... Uh, weave, brand, story, problem, solutions, all this communication is through newsletter. So how can you compile your, uh, your knowledge, your expertise into, let's say, a weekly or biweekly newsletter where you sort of curate pieces from uh, over the internet that you find relevant to your customer base? Maybe you write some pieces or p create a video and you put all of this into a newsletter and guess what? In, the, in that newsletter, you can share testimonials, you can share uh, discounts, maybe promos, but lead with value, lead with brand story and problems and how there's value out there that you're curating and you're becoming, again, the go-to source, the problem solver in your niche, in your industry. And it's going to get people to keep coming back again and again and again. So I hope this was super valuable. And uh, the next one, uh, the next video that I'm going to be recording and publishing here is on boosting sales. So the revenue piece of the raving, raving fan base. And if you implement any of this stuff into your campaign, please just, uh, just take action. That's really all I care about. You, if I'm doing this, just go out there, take action, spend 10 minutes 30 minutes, one hour. Spend one hour doing something that I shared with you here to take action so that, and then share your results. Share what worked, what didn't. And if you have comments or questions or anything like that about this video, please drop them in the comments below. Appreciate you guys and girls for being here. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.